All right, so I guarantee that my secret weapon will enhance the quality of your images and make them look more professional when removing digital noise from any photo. So in this video, I'm gonna share my secret weapon for eliminating digital noise and how it can do something that no other denoise software can do. Make your images sharper, guaranteed. In fact, your images will look like they were created with a higher quality camera and lens and with a lower ISO. So once you discover the secret, you're never going to be scared to use high ISOs again. So what is the perfect digital noise reduction tool? Well, before I reveal it, let's review images created from three other options to prove my secret weapon is perfect, all right? So here's the original image that we're going to use for these tests. And I created this with an ISO of 5000. And you can see two types of digital noise. Also, just so you know, later on, if you don't think ISO 5000 is high enough for these tests, I'm going to test my secret weapon with this image here, which was shot at ISO 25600, all right? So all of these little specks of colors are often referred to as color noise, and the other looks like grain, which is known as luminance noise. And it's hard to see right now because the color noise is dominant. But if I turn off the detail panel here, it's going to automatically remove the color noise with the default color options. And now you can see the luminance noise, which are these little specks of gray. So. There's also some digital artifacts you may have noticed here along the edge of the barn swallow, which is part of the general drawback of most noise reduction tools. Another problem with noise reduction is the way that it's done. To remove the noise, the app will blur the pixels in your image, reducing the details and making it softer. But as you can see with the image over here on the right, I was able to reduce the noise and make the image sharper. So was this done in Lightroom? Let's find out. All right, so with Lightroom's legacy denoise options, it's not doing a really good job, is it? So we can try increasing the luminance to remove more of those gray colored specks, but as you can see, it's starting to blur out the image even more. So let's go ahead and try the denoise AI tool by clicking on this button here, and let's see if we can improve on the results. So the default is 50, but it will stick to the last setting that you used. And then you can click and drag around to the different parts of the image to see how well it did with the noise removal. So there's still some gray specks in here. And if I increase this to around 75 or so, it should do a better job in removing that digital noise. However, just like with the legacy option, it is blurring our barn swallow. So it's not really doing all that great of a job. So let's go ahead and enhance this. And we're going to then compare it to the secret weapon. So the left image is the Lightroom enhanced version. And my secret weapon is over here on the right. And there's no comparison. It's cleaner and definitely sharper than the Lightroom version. All right, so there's another popular plugin for removing digital noise called DXO Pure Raw. So let's go ahead and try that one out next. All right, so let's go ahead and process this original raw file in DXO. Now, unlike Lightroom's Denoise AI, DXO has two different noise reduction models. So we have D-Prime and D-Prime XD. So XD is more aggressive and it's better for higher ISO images like this one, so we're going to use XD. Now, Optical Corrections has several options that are already turned on, and I have those turned on to create a higher quality image and to make it sharper. Now, down here at the bottom, I've chosen to export to Lightroom Classic after it's done processing. We can import that and then compare that to the secret weapon file that I already have in Lightroom. All right, so let's go ahead and add this file to the DXO collection as well. And let's navigate to the collection to compare the images. All right, so we have DPrime XD on the left, secret file on the right, and 
at first glance, they look identical, don't they? However, there are some differences to them. And once I show you those and point them out, you'll see that the secret file is cleaner and sharper than DXO. So I know it's hard to see on your monitor, but if you take a look at the background, you can still see some luminance noise in the DXO file, whereas the secret file is cleaner. It's also just a little bit sharper, but has finer detail. If you look at different parts of the barn swallow and compare it to the DXO file, you can see there's more detail in the feathers and finer details. So if we take a look right here, compare it to the side, you can see that the secret file has more separation between the feathers and more feathers. If we take a look at the top of the barn swallow's feather here, and in the DXO file, we can see those feathers, but they're big, clunky, and blocky compared to, at least, to the secret file. And the feathers in this are more refined, thinner, and natural. So to me, this is 10 times better than DXO. Now, there is another plugin, popular plugin, that is used for noise reduction, and it's called Topaz, Topaz Denoise AI. So can we get better results with that or similar results compared to my secret file? Well, let's check that one out next. All right, so let's go ahead and add this raw file into Topaz Denoise AI and take a look at the results with this one, and then we'll compare it again with the secret file. Now, when I was testing this out earlier, I found that low light worked best for this particular image, and we have multiple AI denoise models compared to Lightroom and DxO. So again, there shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all to every possible ISO setting. Some of these models are going to work better than others depending on the file and the ISO setting that you used. So you can definitely see that it's cleaner and sharper, but is it better or equal to the secret file? Well, let's go ahead and save this file and go ahead and bring it into Lightroom. Now I am exporting this as a TIFF file and that's because when I did this originally this way to save it as a raw file, it wouldn't open the file. There was a corruption that occurred during the saving of the image. So I need to save this into TIFF instead of DNG. And TIFF is going to be a higher quality image file compared to JPEG. It's going to retain more information. All right, now I just need to go into Lightroom here and import it. But first, I have to find it. I'm not quite sure where I saved it. I think it's in Topaz Denoise, and we're going to undo that one and bring in the TIFF file. Now, unfortunately, let's go ahead and put this into the collection here with the Topaz files. Now, here's the original secret file, and you can see that they are a little bit different, and that's because the edits that I did in Lightroom were not applied to this TIFF file, during the export process. So there's a little bit of extra work to do in order to make those match. Pretty simple. All we have to do is go into Lightroom here and sync the files. Now that didn't work out as I expected. It's a little darker and muddier compared to my original edit, even though I copied those settings from one to the other. So I would have to go in and do some adjustments. However, you can definitely see that it's not as sharp as my secret file, which is now over here on the left side. So let's go ahead and switch these. So definitely sharper with the secret weapon versus the Topaz Denoise AI tool. So there's definitely no comparison between the two. The secret file is much better. But the question is, which Denoise AI tool did I use to create this image? Well, let's open up the original raw file and apply some settings to see it live, and then I'll reveal which app I used. All right, so here's the original raw file before noise reduction and sharpening, and after, before and after. So clean and sharp, but 
What about that other image that we talked about previously? Well, here it is. This image was shot at ISO 25600, and this is the original with lots of noise, and now clean and sharp. How cool is that? I love it. Now, another question I promise to answer is whether or not you should apply your noise reduction and sharpening before or after any other edits. Unfortunately, it's not an easy answer because it all depends on your needs for your final image, the quality of the image you started with, and more. Personally, I like to do all my edits before noise reduction and sharpening. Then I'll process my images to remove noise and sharpen them. That's because I like to have fine control over the noise reduction and sharpening of my images after I've done all my other edits. Now, as you saw in the examples, a one size fits all approach doesn't provide the best results. In my secret weapon here, we have multiple AI models for noise reduction and sharpening, and this provides the pro results that I get. But don't take my word for it. I want you to test this out for yourself with your own images. And I think you will agree that this is the best tool for removing noise and sharpening your images. And you can find a link below to download a free trial of Topaz Photo AI. However, there's one problem. Learning new software can be frustrating and time consuming. So I recommend watching this video next to learn how to use and get the most out of Topaz Photo AI to create amazing images that are noise free and sharp.